You are listening to Fearlessly Authentic with Jody Harrison Bauer. We'd and love to so hear wise. from you with any questions or comments you may have. Send an email to info at jodyharrisonbauer.com. That's info at jodyharrisonbauer.com. Now, back to Fearlessly Authentic. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Fearlessly Authentic. And my guest today, Alexa Fisher of Wish Beads. And Alexa is going to teach us guide us. Well, first of all, let's define what a wish is. Well, one of the things when I was talking about, thinking about wish beads and kind of, you know, you have to come up with marketing copy and like, what is really the heart of this? And I think in a way we've been wishing all wrong. Like we do this sort of empty gesture that it's a gesture that we do typically when we're older around our birthday or we toss a penny in a fountain and then you like never, like you don't, A, you don't believe it. You don't give it any energy. And then you certainly never think about it again. We just don't believe that it's true. And yet, when you are a child, there is this real genuine connection, deep connection to that wish. And I remember when um, I was just noodling this idea about wish beads, like it was early, early, early. And I had stumbled upon this product called Flying Wish Paper. And or maybe it was actually before wish beads. I don't remember because the kids were quite little, my kids. And I brought it home and I was like, oh my gosh, you can write a wish. Maybe I've always liked wishing, but you can write a wish and you put it on this paper and then we're going to light it and it's going to like, like go up in flames. And, um, and that's how you send your wish up to the universe. I think my kids actually were much younger. And so, of course, they're also boys. So they really, anything that I'm going to light on fire in the living room, <laughs> they were totally down with. So, but, but my youngest, I didn't see what he wrote, but he wrote something, we lit it, and he literally looked to the ceiling to see if the Lego set was going to come dropping down. You know, that so is cute. kind of, <laughs> and, and, and then I was like, oh, wait, I've, I've, I've misled you, right? Because the adult in me is like, well, that's not how it works. <laughs> Let me explain. And I thought, with wish beads, in a way, we're going to reinvent the wish because, and I talked about this earlier, specificity is so powerful because if I say, I want to be happy and, and you're like, I want to be happy too, but the movie, the description, the fulfillment of happiness for me is very different for the fulfillment of happiness for you. And for some reason, we have been indoctrinated or we just sort of threw away this idea of wishing as child's play or empty gestures. It doesn't work. All the narrative, for whatever reason we, want, we, we, we have bought into, and instead we re- reinvent it. So wish beads actually begins, the magic begins with doing a guided visualization. And I do it three ways. One, at wishbeads.com slash yes you're actually activating your wish. You're going to get a guided visualization. It's me leading you through 10 minutes where you are seeing a moment in time where you are living your wish. You are, everything feels just right. Because in this new way to wish, it's not about things or titles or um, some kind of external thing. It's actually a feeling where everything feels just right. But in order for you to know what the circumstances are, the conditions for that, in a way you can creatively explore that by visualizing. Now, not everybody is visual, so it could be a feeling. There's also a writing exercise that you do next that you can explore that creatively, or it could be a color. It's open to you, but there is is specificity there that is unique to every person. The next part is to record your experience in present tense language. It's as if you're living it right now. It's not this idea or fairy tale that sometime in the future and the language of using that in the future tense in a way keeps it apart from you. And the idea is to drink from the nectar of that wish right now. I did that this morning. It was really cool. It was really cool to do it. I, I kept reading the directions, which said, you're, it's present tense, present not about tense. the future. And I thought, wow, this is really cool to do. I loved it. Yeah. It's like, I am standing. I am seeing. I am wearing. I am hearing. I am, you're activating your senses. And you can get this guided visualization online. 
You, I have a Wish Beads app in iTunes. I have my book, Wish Work. There is a written guided visualization. The book also functions as a journal. Ooh, props, lovely, yay. Yes, here it is. Very easy to read, very easy to follow. I think this is a great guide to help anybody. I, I absolutely loved it. Yay. So this, um, so as you can see, even wish beads on, on the surface level, it looks like intention setting jewelry, but it's really a teaching tool. I'm really a teacher first and foremost. Yeah, you and, are. Uh, yeah. And so after you write your wish and you write it down in vivid detail, then you take the essence of that wish, almost as if it was a movie title, and you write it on a piece of paper that's included in your wish beads jewelry. Oh, I left my boxes of jewelry a little bit out of reach, but Wait. on the boxes of jewelry... And then what you do is you I have you it. Each, I have a prop. I have it. Yay. Yeah. So each of the bracelets, and I have necklaces as well, but each of them have a little cylinder, a brass cylinder. And you write your wish, like the movie title of it, so you know specifically what it represents. You roll it up and you insert it inside the scroll, inside the cylinder of your jewelry. And then you tighten it up tight and you wear it as a visible reminder. And this is really critical. <laughs> as a visible reminder of what your heart deeply desires. Because in our busy lives, in our busy worlds, in our demanding to-do lists, in our buzzing phones, in our, the stress that we are around us, it is so easy to forget. And when you see it, you remain inspired to one, <clears throat> keep it top of mind, but also to take action. And it's work. So, I, and, and I like that you refer to this as wish work in your book because, yeah. and you said right at the beginning that, you know, when people talk about making a wish, it could sound sometimes frivolous. Yep. That is, oh, it's just a wish, just a wish. But if you're super intentional on that wish, you have a visual, you're writing something down, you have something on your wrist or around your neck to constantly remind you of how important that wish is to you. Yeah, and, and you nourish it. You nourish it with your intention, with your love. You remember the details. In a, in a wish circle, I'll tell you about, we have one coming up, but a wish circle is where I guide live, guide it. We do it virtually on Zoom. And one woman shared, you know, she was feeling very claustrophobic um, in her apartment, quarantining. And when she did the, when I led her through the, the visualization exercise, she was in this beautiful forest that she has gone to and she was there and she was smelling it and she was feeling it and it felt like, you know, a future a vacation and she was there feeling nourished. And it's like such a powerful feeling. So you can put that in your wish beads, but then also you can use it as a guidepost. So I said, what would it, you know, to bring some of that to your, to your circumstances now, it could be changing your screensaver to have it have beautiful pine trees. It could be lighting a pine or forest scented candle. It could be listening to a sound that is like the sounds of nature. And so there's a way to one, have a glimpse at what your being is longing for or seeing, feeling. And then two, as a conscious way to bring that to your life right now, because we can work, we can exercise the habit of, of, of self-love, of honoring what do I need? So whether that is sleep or whether it needs more time in nature, a connection with friend, um, a loving thought that you give to yourself in the mirror, when we give ourselves what we want, we are full. And we're not looking outside of ourselves for another person's validation or the validation of our bank account. Or, or for another any... person to tell you that you're great. We need to no. know that ourselves. And yes. I, I feel that your book, with its guidance, gives people that, that ability to take the action that maybe they feared taking because yeah. people do fear looking too deeply into their feelings. Right. They, they fear what they may find. And I feel that with your steps and with the constant reminder that that helps them kind of embrace fear and make yeah. fear their friend. So they know that they're going through this with something tangible. Do you feel that way? Yeah, I do. And I also like have made wish work like crazy simple. And uh, there's one story that I'll share 
I mean, my, the wish work is as simple as listen to a song playing on the radio and are there lyrics that there's a message, like a hidden message for you. Remember when we did that, when we get like mixed tapes from, you know, <laughs> boys we liked and it's like, what did they mean by that? Um, but you know, there was a woman who shared with me, she actually wrote to me cause she said, you know, she went on a girl's vacation and the hostess of this gathering got wish beads for everybody and they took a night and they did this, you know, around the fire and they did this, their intentions and their wishes and they made it a whole thing, which I thought was so beautiful. But what was hilarious was this woman confessed that she wasn't like that into it. She loved the jewelry, but she thought that the, you know, wishing felt a little woo woo for her or whatever. Now she's telling me this as, because she's like, then you're not going to believe what happened. So I, we did the visualization as, you know, this, at the girls getaway. And the next day she was in the airport and she had signed up for the wish work. So the email came in day one, time to smile. The first day of wish work is just to smile at somebody. And she confessed that she was like, this is so ridiculous. It's like cor- really it's corny. Like this is not going to change my it's life. So, what, you know, that's so Alexa. She, she doesn't know me, but like, you know, it's just corny. But then there was another voice inside of her that was like, well, maybe I'll just do it, you know? And so she's in the airport and you know, this is all pre pandemic, you know, everybody's busy. They got their heads in their phones. There's grumpy people in line trying jockeying for position. She looked around and literally could not find a set of eyeballs looking up. This is a really a thing in our digital age. Couldn't find anybody. And then suddenly she spied a young boy, maybe five. And he was not, uh, uh, surprisingly, not on a device. And she looked over, looked him in the eye, and smiled at him. And this little boy walked right up to her and said, you are the best person ever. <gasps> oh, and her oh. ju- Jaw dropped. And she was like, What the heck is this? Oh, that and is she wrote so to me, sweet. I know. And she's like, In a way, I was testing the universe whether this thing is real. And again, I will say, wish beads are not magic, but you are magic. Everyone is magic to create the life that they want if you just get curious enough to give it a try. And I've created wish work to be so simple that it's not hard work. You don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to know a lot or read a big fat book. It's just an invitation to just try and see the world a little bit differently and see what would it, what would it mean for you you to say your wish out loud or notice green lights today and just reflect on that. And the more energy you put towards it, the more that you start to gain some confidence, confidence that, oh my God, like things are popping up. Like this person emailed me out of the blue or like it felt so fun to get on Google and research this kind of vacation that I was curious about because I saw myself on the beach in Hawaii. What? Awesome. Or, you know, like suddenly life starts to appear slightly more magical than you realized. And it's not hard. It's been there all along, like the freaking Wizard of Oz. And you're giving them, and you're giving them that confidence to yes. actually dream big, dream yes. big because you are a star. You You're are. Star. Uh, I I yeah. I I love your message. I think I think more people need to think about that. We can talk yeah. and talk and talk about that, but until you take the steps like this woman did and smile at this boy, and thank goodness she did that because then she started believing in herself more. Yes. You know, yes. and yes. so many people yes. don't. They're like, ah, no. Like for me and my business, it's weight loss or changing the way you feel in your body or something like that. Uh, People come to me for different reasons. And I see, I see the light in them. I see the shining star in them. And it's my job to get that out of them. And it's in a different way. I work differently with them, whether it's through diet and exercise, but when they start seeing that they've taken the action, then they start seeing the results just like this woman did. I'm going to take the action, smile at somebody and look what that action what gave back to her. Look how the universe gave back to her. I yeah. love that. Yeah, you will, you will get back what you put out into the world. Yes. And so 2020 is our opportunity to say, well, wow, where am I? Who am I? 
What am I creating? What story am I living by? And in the same way that you help people, you know, they can't just read a book about working out and expect to receive the results. And so many self-help or wellness practices, you can't just read the books. You have to walk the walk and experience it. And I'm a lifelong learner. And I'm always challenging myself to step out of my comfort zone because I couldn't possibly teach this without doing it myself. So I have to tell you, because you and I have had this joke, because you have a gorgioso body and you were rocking your like bikinis and stuff. And I was like, Jody, I have to tell you, like, I never wear a bikini, like never, never. And I'm, you know, a pretty fit person, but like, no, 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 not my jam. Which, and then when you get that mentality, then you start to also be just like, you know, generally a little bit, I don't know, shy about it. I don't know why. I'm a very modest person. So this summer, we've been spending a ton of time at the beach because we live by the beach. My kids love the ocean. It was very good for their mental well being and it's fun. But I would find myself, you know, reading books or meditating on the beach or, you know, not swimming as much. And my kids would be like, you should swim. You should swim and come in with me, which is nice. I shouldn't say it in that voice, but it was really lovely. But I would often like 90% be sitting on the beach. Like mom's okay here with her book. I'm good with my book. Exactly. I'm going to do the crossword. (laughs) Will Shorts and I are just going to have fun right at the beach. But what ended up happening was a friend of mine would take her son, who's really good buddies with my son, and they would go for these dawn ocean swims at dawn. And somehow my son was like, I'm in, I want to do it. And I would drive him at six o'clock in the morning in the dark to their house. And they would walk from their house to the beach and they would go for a swim. And bless his little heart. He was like, mama, you should really come. It's, it's amazing. But the thought, Jody, of being like in the ocean, in the dark, freaked me out. That would scare me. The ocean right? scares me. I love the ocean, but I'm afraid I'm going to get bit by a shark. Exactly. Because we all <laughs> saw Jaws and we were ruined forever. <laughs> right. But so, so, so I didn't do it. I hadn't, I hadn't gone. It was like, no, that's for people like you or people like Annie or people like whatever, but that's not for me. Why? Because we tell a story about ourselves and then we believe that it's the truth. So then my son kept on poking um, at my husband and I. And then on Tuesday, uh, my husband was like, all right, I'm going to go. And I was like, oh, you know, wow, cool. All right. So also cool because then I didn't have to drive him at six. He comes back and he was like, Alexa, that was life altering. It was, it was literally life altering to be in the ocean he goes, you know, I don't know, recently we, re- we, re- we re-watched Forrest Gump and he has that moment where he's talking to Jenny about him jogging America. You know, he would jog back and forth, Tom Hanks, as Forrest Gump. And he said, there's a moment where you don't know if the sky is beginning and the, and the land, it like meets and merges. He said, the, there is nothing that you can feel and experience like the dawn, seeing the dawn come up on the water's edge and he's like a pod of dolphins swimming by. He's like, it is so unbelievably magical. And it is literally five minutes from our house. We have lived here 18 years and we have never done this. Wow. And I was like, I am in. The, the, the idea that we could have this and it, like this, this potential magic was so close to my fingertips and I hadn't yet done it was enough for me to overcome my fear I did, however, get myself a wetsuit, but this morning I was going to ask you if you wore a bikini. (gasps) I wore a wetsuit. Okay. (laughs) Because I didn't want to be cold. I'm coming out to California and buying you a bikini. (laughs) Get your hot body in a bikini. Oh my God. But it was, it was, it was everything that he had said and more. And so that is when we can learn how to break free from our concepts of what we're afraid of Mm -hmm. and just taste taste something. I cannot believe, Jody, that I have not done this until now. It was, it was life altering. And look at that, right. Like you said, telling that story to yourself over and over again, getting over that fear, that fear is so much of what um, stops us from getting to the next place in life, taking us action is fear. Yeah. So much fear. I mean, as I, I mean, I used to be the biggest scaredy cat in the world and now I'm like, bring it on, bring it on. I don't know yeah. if I would go in the water in the dark, but 
Maybe well, the light did come, come up pretty quickly. It but did. I'm so yeah. proud of you. Well, we're going to do this. You're going to come out to California and I'm going to take you on a dawn swim. And it's interesting because, you know, we joke about like Jaws and then it ruined it for everybody. But think how much fear that that movie, that one thing that someone created that was enormously successful, but what it did to people's consciousness and how they think about not only sharks, but the water. It's so interesting. So then we have to ask ourselves in this 2020 time, where are we putting our attention and what is it feeding in terms of the consciousness? And because news and, you know, we somehow have created this system where we're addicted to watching and taking in fear, it has this contagion to it. I say, let's go very consciously with our clicks and our time and our energy and move in the direction of love and light and magic and wonder. And the more that we do that, it's actually an act of selfless giving because that energy is contagious. And those stories are contagious in the same way that fear is. Oh, yeah. It's very, very true. And I think we all want to get to that fulfilling part of our life. And we want to not live in fear. No. And we, no. Want, we want to reach that, that sense of fulfillment. I know that that's a hard place to get for a lot of people. And yeah. we are learning a lot. We are learning so, so much. So what are some of the concrete results that you feel that you've gotten from some of your students or even from yourself by practicing what you preach? Well, things come up. Things come to me in a way that surprise the heck out of me. So whether it is people that I'm intending to bring into my life or experiences, um, support, opportunities that are like, what? Um, for other people, it could be you know, even things, and I say it's not about external things, but also like manifesting the perfect new home or relationship or, you know, the miracle of uh, uh, Dr. Marcy Cole was just on my podcast and she wished for, she had two wishes, two different bracelets. One, her parents who were in their mid nineties were both um, ailing, very ailing. And she said, I just want them, you know, she wished for them. Anyway, they bounced back. Honestly, they're still with us. It was like a year and a half ago. And she wished for new love and she's now in the relationship of her life. She's like, holy smokes, girl, this stuff works. Do you feel that a lot of people, the wishes that they have, they share with you, right? Not always. Some people are very private about it. I think that there's power in sharing. Mm -hmm. I also think that sometimes wishes, I'm not saying wishes come true in 21 days. Sometimes they take time. Um, I also know that there's a temptation to wish for other people. This is your invitation to wish for yourself. This is your wish. And when you And it's not step selfish. Into, it's not no. selfish to wish for yourself. And so many no. people think, because we throw around self-care and people are like, self-care isn't selfish, but do you really hear what you're saying? It's not selfish yeah. to wish for yourself, to wish no. for love. And I was curious to see if the people that do share their wishes with you, are they mostly about finding love? No, no, not necessarily. Not at all. I mean, some of them share that, some that are, are around relationships, but I think it's mostly about this idea that, oh my gosh, the world is literally more miraculous than I realized. Mm. You know, I have people that are cancer survivors who are like, this has completely helped me believe in my own healing. It helps me go from this place of abject fear and move into this place of hope and possibility. Like, literally an email that's like, I cannot believe I'm writing this, but my scan came back clear. Oh. Now I am reluctant to say things like that because for not, that won't be the case for everybody. That's why I believe that fear or our obstacles are our best teachers. But if you can find more grace in this journey called life, then, you, then you're, doing, you're doing the work. That is the wish work. So what does fearlessly authentic, to be fearlessly authentic, to live a fearlessly authentic life, because again, I mentioned that I am a self-proclaimed scaredy cat and yeah. I am trying to educate, empower, and inspire others to live a fearlessly authentic life. What does that mean to you? I think it means looking at fear in the eyes and sending it love because you're either giving love or you're crying out for love. And I think our fear is crying out for love. And when you can live in a way that you are living your own life, giving yourself love and others love and selfless giving, 
then you are tapping into the divinity and the grace that it means to be on this planet. I don't think we came here to suffer. I think we came here to find out who we really are. And when you can choose to walk that walk, you will wake up to how powerful this experience can be. All of it, the full expression of it. I cannot say anything more about that. That is so perfectly said. <laughs> and on that note, we have to go. And it has been <laughs> a, an amazing pleasure to talk with you. We need to talk so much more. But again, if anybody is interested in getting in touch with Alexa, or hopefully you all are, it is, give it to them, Alexa. You can find me at alexafisher.com. I have a free training program there and at wishbeads.com and on Instagram at wishbeads.official. Love it. And I love you. And thank you so much for being my guest today. It's been such a pleasure. Oh, the honor was all mine. Thank you, honey. Bye. I'll talk to you soon. Yes. Bye.